And we're back here at 7.07 a.m. KFYL mornings with Dave and Matt. 48 degrees outside. 60 is the forecast high today. And with us in the studio is Councilman Bassengale, and here to explain everything that happened last night at the City Council meeting. Good morning, Councilman. Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Ditto. Well, the uh, the invocation has raised <laughs> some ire and uh, questions, I guess. We had Michael Ward on uh, just a moment ago. Um, a, a question: Why did the Why did the city allow an atheist to give the invocation? Well, we're 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 a public institution. That's a public meeting. There's there's nothing to say that that she can't. Um, I can tell you that it. Um, you know, I think everybody was. Uh, uncomfortable, intense, pending last night's um, remarks. I even hesitate at this point. I'm not sure prayer and invocation may be even the right terminology to use, but in the place of the invocation, she gave uh, a lady from the atheist community gave remarks. Um, it went. She had, she made some very nice comments about Lubbock. Um, you know, <clears throat> back up. What we did was. Um, and by the way, I know Miss Ward called in earlier, and thank I want to thank her for being there last night. She was with a group of people that came and prayed with the council before the the meeting last night. We had um, several ministers with us. Uh, I want to thank uh, Miss, Miss Skeet Workman's uh, Prayer America group was there. They were very kind, and we spent about twenty minutes in prayer, praying about praying for our city. And um, I think the council, all the council, was there, and they were very grateful for that. Um, we opened the meeting as usual last night um, when the Miss Benefield, the lady with the atheist community, came to make her comments. Everybody sat and did not bow their heads, and it, she made very nice comments, and it was over. Yeah. Well, I uh, went uh, to find a definition of invocation, and it's the summoning of a deity. Well, then that's not what she was doing last night. That's right. She did not give an invocation. So she could have just as easily made comments. That's just what I'm wondering. Rather than have the controversy, why didn't the city say, okay, we'll allow you three minutes to make your speech, but we're still going to have an invocation? So, we, we, you know, we put a, um, we did quite a bit of research on this because this was new and different and uncomfortable uh, for us. And uh, there's a lot of, uh, precedent in case law where this has been tested even all the way up to the U.S. House of Representatives. And again, we're, we're a country based on free speech and freedom of religion. And um, when you consider the uh, uh, what might be the consequences, uh, I think we thought it was in our best interest to allow her to make comments. Now, I will tell you it spurred quite a bit of conversation with the council because the council's never had any policy around invocating at a council meeting. Uh, some councils do, and once you establish a uh, process whereby you might sign, sign, sign those con leaders of those congregations up, those recognized congregations that in, in the community, that, then – at least you know where you're headed and who's going to be there rather than the process we had. So we're working on that. That comes out of the city secretary's office. Um, and at some point she will share that with us and then we'll hopefully comply with that policy. Yeah. I mean, and, and one thing that uh, my thoughts were, and I think that y'all may have done it for, for this lady, I'm not sure, but um, I would do it for every, it's just to cover your own back, uh, do it for every single pastor or anybody else who wants to do an invocation is get a copy of what they plan on saying. Yeah, there's many, beforehand. sure, there's many ways to tackle it. You're, you're, you're correct. You don't want to get in, you know, you don't want to, I guess you could get that copy, but you also don't want to um, get get in the habit of uh, controlling free speech. You know, you don't... You, and, but how is it controlling free speech? All you're doing is asking them to tell you what they're going to say before they say it. Absolutely, as it's long not as you like don't reply saying, back right, about you what, can't what they're say saying. That. Sure. Um, right. At the end of the day, it went fine last night, mm -hmm. and um, we, we, we'll move on. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Michael Ward, she, uh, she asked a question. Her question was, when will they get a chance to make a public comment on the changes of the rules uh, to the invocation? 
So those fall within council rules, and at, at some point when, if council rules are on the agenda, and they have been, um, I think council rules were on the agenda the, the last meeting in December, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact. So it's not that they're not on there. Um, then comments could be made concerning those rules. Um, you know, the way... The, the way the rules are around citizen comments right now is those also come out of, to her point, council rules, and those can be changed, council to council. And I think we've made a commitment as a council to relook at those if those aren't working. I heard her comments as I walked in about, um, you know, if she wanted to make a comment about any certain topic that is not on the agenda, she can't do that. But, um, you know, she needs to call her council person and, and, and talk to them, and uh, there are ways to get topics on the agenda if, uh, you know, someone finds it necessary to make comments. Okay. So, obviously, there was a lot more to the meeting last night than the invocation. You know, we had, we had a, a big issue with zoning, did we not? You know, zoning's big at every meeting right now. Yeah. We're, we've talked about this before here on y'all's show. Um <laughs> We're, a, we're, we're very fortunate to be a city of investment and development all the time. And so zone, we have a lot of zone cases, every, every meeting. And um, we had um, so we had one that was interesting about tires, about the display of tires out in uh, front of tire businesses. Um, it garnered lots of conversation and failed. Um, but... Every meeting, there's just we're just very fortunate to have um, to live in a community with great growth right now. So was yeah. uh, a company wanting to put tires like on the sh sidewalk or something? Yeah, the the the, the question is um, some of the, the there's tire companies in my mind. There's a lot of tire companies. I haven't driven and looked at there all are, the tire companies, but companies. when I drive by, they display tires out in front of their business. And there's a problem with that. Well, it's against the ordinance. And uh, signage is it considered signage? No. And it, it's considered outside storage, oh, okay. and you know, and and it's one of those deals of where do you draw the line out outside storage? I mean, we saw pictures last night that, in my mind, are com is completely unacceptable of a pile of old tires in front of a business on Avenue Q that's eight feet high. That's not acceptable. That's not what we want to see in right. our community. Right. You know, I'm not so hung up on the tire racks. I think they're they're tasteful. I understand they're selling selling their wares. My concern last night was, um, you know, I remember driving down 50th. I've driven down 50th all my life. I remember tire companies displaying tires all my life, driving up and down 50th. And if we're gonna, if we've allowed a business to do that to this point, I'm not sure it we, it was right. It's right to impact that business now to surprise them with, oh, can't do that anymore. No, but yeah. that's the way I voted on it. It didn't pass, um, but that was one of the topics. That was that was the contested zoning case last night. Well, there's also the understanding of kind of doing what you want with your own property. I there mean. is, there is, but we live in a we also live in a community with, um, um, just like any community with with zoning and ordinances. Just like if I live next door to you, you wouldn't, you might not want, I might want to put a liquor store in, in my house and serve customers, but you may not want that. That's why we have rules. Yeah, but you already have exactly a tire right. shop there. I mean, it's yep. not well, like if I already had shop. a tire okay. shop next to you, yes, you're right. Yeah. Okay, uh, uh, 716. We'll take a break and be right back with more. Uh, I know the zoning was an issue last night at the council meeting, and one of the zoning issues that I know that's, gonna, that's going to raise, or it already has raised a lot of uh, ire with some, is the uh, changing of some of the, um, the C1 into M1. Or the C four into M one, I believe. Mm -hmm. Like, so was was that addressed last night? No, that 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 will be on at a future meeting. Um, we've continued to work uh, in the background on that. Specifically, uh, Mr. Griffith and Miss Joy have worked on that, and so uh, that has yet to be discussed again. But it, it is coming up. And that's something. And it that, is an issue. It, it is an issue. Yeah, it, it's a huge issue. I know because I, I have some involvement in that. Sure. In my business. Sure. And, and particularly particularly uh, to, for these uh, property owners on Avenue Q where there are car lots. And uh, there's and quite many a few others. folks affected on Frankfurt. I, I agree. I, I'll just tell you how I feel about it. Uh, again, um, I don't think we should impact those uh, businesses 
with the C4 zoning that have existing businesses or, or, or impede them in any way if they wanted to sell or convey those businesses. So what my hope is when the council votes is that um, – the, the, the used car dealers and car dealers are protected on that. Well, I, I just am wondering, why, was, why is this even an issue? I mean, what's, what's the purpose of it? Well, I think a lot of these discussions come up as a result of all the discussions out of the Plan 2040. I mean, keep in mind, we as a community have not uh, reviewed our land use plan, which affects our zoning and, and how we zone things for 30 years. Okay. And so a lot of these zoning discussions, these contentious zoning discussions come up because we have to have the conversation of why are we doing this? Does it make sense to continue doing this? You know, you have to look at what is the best practice today that, you know, we're still, we were still living on a plan that said what best practice was 30 years ago. And so you're going to have a lot of these discussions about this. And I think, you know, C- C4 has become one of those. Yeah. Well, um, so uh, let's talk about a few of the the things that did pass. One was a poli- building a police station. I think y'all approved a company to start building. So th- that last night on the uh, consent agenda was the um, approval of the contract for the architectural and engineering for uh, the new police headquarters. Let's- so how it reads is what it gives the mayor the right to do the contract. Yeah, the mayor executes all contracts. Okay. He's the sign- he's the one signature that binds the city. Okay. So any co- any contract always says uh, gives the mayor authority to execute, but. Um, this is, I think it's important to remind everybody, this is part of the public safety, uh, improvement plan that includes three substations, a smaller downtown headquarters, um, a property warehouse and moving municipal court next to citizens tower. So the contract last night was awarded to Park Hill, Smith and Cooper for the design of the, uh, new headquarters building, which will be, uh, in the parking lot that the city already owns just south of the Mahon library. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so we'll start drawing. So we'll, they'll start designing that. They'll work with our police department and start designing that facility. And then that's the first check box as we move forward to break ground and build it. So uh, do they have any, uh, any idea of when they might start breaking ground on that? You know, I haven't had that discussion. It generally takes design is can can be 12 as long as 18 months so i'm not sure we would break ground on that facility this year more likely next year okay. uh, although we will be breaking ground also as a reminder on two of the substations so we already have two sites uh we had a citizen donate land for the south substation at 140th and in indiana mm-hmm. and then the city owns the property at mlk and 19th and that will be the east substation which is going to be beautiful yeah. Looking over the oh, absolutely the park there, and um, then we are working on determining where the third north substation location will be, and you know, hopefully, in the next few months, we're able to talk about that. Yeah. Mm. So. Well, as uh, as said, uh, there was a lot of text messages this morning. It's, it's regarding the atheist prayer last night, mm-hmm. and we have a text that says, "In all seriousness, I'm a practicing druid," and. <laughs> In light of last night's council invocation, how do I go about signing up to provide the invocation? That's from Dale, by the way. There, there's information on the city secret, sec, secretary's site to do that. So <laughs> We have another texture that says the council handled the invocation well. Gave her the three minutes to speak and then immediately moved on to the agenda, Chris. Yeah, and, and I just want to say, I, I know that some people were irritated about it. I know that you have a lot of uh, Christian people in Lubbock that are bothered by someone else or another religion. But in the end, um, you know, the government has to follow the laws and this is the least important thing on the whole agenda. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, I mean, it, I'm not trying to be mean. Yeah. But... You, you, you know, there is, we, we, we live in a country that we all believe strongly in our right to free speech. Do mm-hmm. we not, or we not, would not be here this morning. We also believe in our right to bear arms. Yeah. You, freedom you of know, religion. If you've got a license in that same chambers, you may be able to, you can speak freely and you can also have your firearm. Yeah. Now I'm not saying the invocation is the least important part of the <clears throat> council. What I'm saying, I just want to clarify. I'm saying that as far as what happened last night, 
that the atheist giving the invocation is the least important part of that. I understand. You know, so, you, you have yeah. a council that that prefers Christian prayer right now, and it, it was okay. uncomfortable, but uh, we, we learned and we have to get some break. Gotta I mean, run. We'll, we'll take a break and be right back. We're visiting with Councilman Massengale uh, regarding. Uh, issues that were discussed last night at the council meeting. We have a texter this morning that says, is there going to be anyone being held in those police substations? Uh, there'll be no detention. Right? I mean, there, you know, there's there's no detention uh, facilities planned for any of those substations. Uh, okay. We have a texter. Again, this is anytime you mention the gun issue, uh, you know, it ignites some passions. It says, how can councilmen say that we have the right to bear arms in the same sentence with, if you have a license, the definition of license is the privilege to do something that would otherwise be illegal. Well, I was simply citing the constitutional right to bear arms coupled with the fact the state law allows you to have a handgun, uh, if you have a license. So, anyway, I don't know how else to explain. You that. you can own a firearm in America without having a license. That's true. You can't carry one uh, that's in Texas. Cor- that's correct. In some states, you can, unless you're going to the range or you're and going to the gun store. If you want to fix that, you need to fix it at the state level. Mm-hmm. Now, see, I've always wondered because obviously you have to if you go to the store and you buy a gun, you have to carry it out to your car. So. I've often wondered yeah, why it's you. It's in a in a proper carrying. Oh, it has to be in a proper carrying. I mean, you don't. You, you can't, can't stick, just brandish. You can't it. stick it in your no, belt. Right. No. Legally, no. you can't. That that would be okay. Yeah. Well, the, the, I guess that makes sense then. Okay. Now let's go on and talk about serious things. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, we. Uh, so it looks like there was. Um, uh, it's over close to Wolferth, mm-hmm. ninety acres that a hospital is looking at buying. And they needed that switched over to hospital. Uh, what what, so what that, exactly is going on over that there? That was a zone case brought to the city council last night by Covenant Health Systems. Uh, they own the triangle, if you can um, vision with me here, uh, west towards the Wolferth-Lubbock uh, boundary. Uh, the north side of this property is Marsha Sharp. The south side of the triangle is 82nd, and the east side of the triangle is warsaw so it's is that a, it's kind of let's behind, see, is it across the street from it, it's, it's that big triangle behind buffalo wild oh, wings bu- behind buffalo wild yeah. okay they already own the property uh, they have planned for a mixed use development they're going to build a i believe what is an outpatient uh, hospital there uh, that that construction is going to start within the next 18 months but when i say mixed use their concept is they are going to bring in some um, what I took away from my conversation with the covenant leadership, some healthy lifestyle type, uh, businesses, um, maybe a healthy food mart, maybe a fitness center, oh, maybe, okay. a th- maybe a movie theater along in this same complex, um, um, uh, that would, uh, kind of dovetail with what they're doing there at the hospital, but they have uh, some very creative plans, uh, if you see the way they have it laid out, it's very attractive. See, I think it's an exciting development in West Lubbock. See, and when when I saw 90 acres, I'm like, they have to be building a whole new hospital over there with 90 acres. Well, really, ho- the hospital's not the biggest part of it. Uh-huh. The biggest part of it is the commercial development they're going to support yeah, there. that makes sense, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, you know, if you had a, a family member that was having some, um, you know, outpatient surgery, you could... Okay, well, walk across the street, explain, watch the Exactly. Explain outpatient hospital. Well, I don't know that I'm the one to explain that. I mean, I've had, I mean, you're in and out in a day. Yeah. Essentially, so you go in in the morning, have, you're out in the evening. Yeah. So they're not going to have like overnight hospital beds. Is that right? You know, I think Probably they not. they might, but I don't, I don't think that's, that that's their goal at that location. Hmm. Okay. All right. So, um, uh, that, let's see, that's about all the, that covers the zoning that was discussed sure, last night. Sure, I'd have one other thing to mention that I think happened this week that is important. Uh, Lita announced a project out at the um, business park, uh, which is uh, out near the airport. Um, and um, this is actually a, a project on a piece of property just west of DPS. It's a 160,000 okay. square foot, foot cross-dock facility um, 
uh, built by a company out of Dallas, actually, with Texas Tech ties. It's called Bandera Ventures. And it's exciting um, because it's speculative. And to see that type of interest in, in private investment in Lubbock is, again, just a, is a sign that, that great things are happening here. So it's going to be like a shipping company? Well, it, 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 it's going to be a facility that's going to be very flexible that they could do any number of things. But the point is, is they don't have a tenant right now. And so, but they think the activity is great enough. They've obviously looked at what's going on at the airport. They've looked at what uh, goes on on I-27 and the transit that might come in and out of our community and the industry we have here. Um, We have a shortage of warehouse space in Lubbock. Mm -hmm. When Lita or even realtors are trying to show commercial uh, buyers uh, warehouse space, we have a shortage. And so, but as an investor, someone who who builds these type of things, speculative development is tough and risky. And so I think it's important to know this is probably the first of more that will come. If you've ever flown into like DFW and you've seen all these warehouse facilities Mm -hmm. on the ground, those are all cross dock facilities. And so Mm -hmm. it's exciting uh, uh, to have that type of development in Lubbock. Mm -hmm. It it can open up. Uh, I was going to say, All right. open up the ability to have distributors. Okay. Here. Sure. Let's do a quick break, and uh, I'll be back with more after this. 7.46 a.m. here on KFY All Mornings with Dave King and with Matt Martin. So and we, and uh, Councilman, starting to say Massey, Congressman, yeah, yeah. but it's Councilman uh, Steve Madison. I don't want the Congressman's <laughs> job, don't we? <laughs> I don't think I would either. He, he, Especially, they've got their hands full. You know, I was going to say they, they might have had some fun for a couple of years while he was up there, but now they're kind of in the minority. It's a fight. Uh, so. There's no doubt. Uh, there's there's no doubt. You think we're ever going to get government open again? I think they, you know, they will. I, you know, I, um, I'm not sure I understand the tactics of either side, but um, I don't either. I, um, you know, I hope they get it figured out, I guess is all I'll say. So uh, we didn't have a councilman come in during the month of December. I mean, all the, the, the dates were changed. Everything was funky. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, we, we, we had changed the dates out of, to, to coincide with the holidays. Right. And and so anyway, um, during the month of December, you were saying that uh, they finished the 2040 plan. So tell us a little bit about what that entails well i think it's probably best to say that we approved the plan 2040 there's nothing finished about it Mm -hmm. It, it, it's kind of a living document but that that covers the land use plan which which is a recommendation from the citizens uh group that we appointed to uh uh that they presented to the council and talks about what we want our city to look like as it as it develops and it affects zoning and and it affects development all obviously and from there, a few things will happen. One is uh, we'll, we'll start um, work on a new zoning code, which is a huge undertaking. Um, the other thing we'll do is we'll start discussion about impact fees, which uh, the short story there is how um, development will help pay for roadways as we need them. Um, if you ever scratch your head when you see a great development of houses that's bordered by dirt roads just because we we don't have a real good plan to ensure that the roads grow with the, mm-hmm. the development and you know we'll have an oversight there's there's going to be uh continue to be citizen oversight hopefully uh, um some folks from our cpac which was the uh citizens committee to to oversee that but you'll continue to see uh, work being done on, on that result from the plan 2040. I would remind everybody that it's a lot of information. If they're interested, they can access that information at mylubbock.us. Um, the other, I don't know how many, much time we have left, but I want to remind everybody that starting next the next meeting, which I think is February 22nd, council, we have moved all of our – we will meet on Tuesdays now. Mm-hmm. And uh, also be cognizant of the time because – the things we do in our meeting that are ceremonial, like uh, board appointments or special recognitions or resolutions, we're going to do before five, and then st- we're still going to maintain protect that five o'clock time slot for citizens to come and make comments to the council. Yeah. We we have a texture this morning that asked uh, is is uh, Councilman Massengale in favor of Governor Abbott's two point five percent property rollback by voters proposal? 
No. Okay. <laughs> you know, I think those those types of decisions lie in the hands of local voters, and um, I, I I think that's why we're elected. And I, I it's really hard for me to get behind this this property tax reform, which really crams it down on cities and counties. I think we ought to we. I think local control works best in those situations. Well, It'll be interesting to see how that it plays local out. Control if uh, if it's an election afterwards, you know, you need five percent. You take it to the people. Well, I guess that is a, a form of local control, but I think we already have local control. You 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 can elect us in or out of office. Um, you know, there's a lot of things at two point five percent that cities will, you know, you you, you might not get. Uh, you know, organic growth, which is healthy, could be more than 2.5%. Well, but it said that uh, growth isn't included in that. And it was only, right? They said... Uh, uh, I don't think, I think growth is included in that. Uh, I, I'm almost positive I, I read that uh, if, if your city grows, in other words, um, so if the new, ta- new, new taxes that are coming from new people, it's just the raise of taxes that, that that's uh, capped at. Yeah, I understood it that it was both. Well, I don't know. We'll we'll look into that. It'll be but. a very interesting debate as the legislature um, moves forward. And see, they've committed. To, you know, this is really all about school finance. Yeah. Okay, and if they can, re- if they can, and as a guy that served on the school board for eight years, I you know I, I have a little bit of insight into school finance. They've never fixed this. They kick this can down the road. They kick it down the road. So it'll be interesting to see if they get this done. Okay, and one other well, question, well, I. Uh, I think we're out of time here, uh, Matt. Well, we got we can take a minute. Uh, uh, the soccer fields, the I think seven million dollars for that. That all uh, apparently passed. I, I'm assuming. Yeah that 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 came from Market Lubbock. But right. Yes, my, yeah, that's a proposal from Market Lubbock. That's correct. Okay. Were you for or against that? Very. I'm um, for that. I okay. think those are dollars wisely spent for that type of. That that's what those dollars are for. Okay. We've talked about that before. I think I know how you feel about that, Matt. Yes, I know. I, I think you were here when we when yeah we, we first did. came up. But you did. Just to remind everybody, um, it's phased in it, I don't, over a couple of years, but we're going to make improvements out at Burl Huffman um, uh, Soccer Complex. There's just if you're a soccer person, uh, it, there's not ideal conditions out there. It's a it's, communist sport, you know. It's a what? <laughs> it's a communist sport. <laughs> It's very popular in Lubbock. <laughs> it's very popular everywhere, I'll, I'll remind you. And okay. uh, it, it's going to be a way that we're also going to attract some some events and some, some people to come spend, night, spend nights in our city. And I think at the end of the day, We're going to have enough good. hotel rooms for them, I assure you that. <laughs> okay. Probably make those hoteliers on the North Loop, Pappy. Uh, Councilman, thank you so much for coming out. Thanks and, for having uh, me. We'll take a quick break and be back with more after this.